All right, so today was the first proper mountain top finish with, you know, 13 kilometer climb at 7%, hilly all day, very exciting. Maybe it's not the first proper one, but an actual exciting one for sure. A lot of time gaps. And the thing that's getting me excited is Jack Haig. Now, Ineos had a shocker. I don't think there's any other way of describing it. They took it on early on the on the penultimate climb, or actually the third, the not really the penultimate climb, the climb before that. Um, but anyway, took it a long way out took it up, realized they weren't dropping anyone, and then they had Yates attacking, then got dropped, and then they had like, yeah, a burnout on no man's land. But the people who did well, obviously, were Bahrain victorious. Number one, took the W with Damiano Caruso, which was a huge ride from him, 70k solo, very, very strong boy. Um, okay, Lander had a shocker, but that's okay. You sort of can expect that from Lander. Obviously, he crashed out in the Giro. You'd maybe expect him to go a bit better. But the man we're going to talk about today is Jack Haig. Now, obviously, Jack Haig did crash out the world. So I heard he hasn't, um, sorry, the tour on stage three. I heard he hasn't trained that much, maybe just before the Vuelta. Had an okay time trial in Burgos, but you probably expect a bit more from him. Uh, but what we can expect from this boy is that he's actually quite a good time trialist. Okay, he's not like... Um, 10 out of 10 gonna win um, every time trial but here you know 34 seconds back on Lutchenko on this dodgy TT um, in the Dauphiné but anyway very very strong in my opinion and we're gonna go look at some power later and this is also why I think you know obviously you can infer what you want from this uh, but if we go for the time gaps Jack Haig lost only 30 well yeah like 30 seconds 40 seconds on on Primoz Roglic on the GC now um, He's fourth, a minute 42 back, which does sound a lot, but he's a very strong team with Caruso, Landa, Padun, Maida. Like, they're all up there. There's a lot of them up there. Uh, I mean, you've got, from 16th, you've got Landa, Caruso, Maida, and Haig. Now, that's a lot of cards to play and a lot of pressure you can put on Jumbo Visma. And they also seem like they're quite an organized team. They're not like Movistar. But I think he can get on the podium easily. Um, I think he's stronger than Lopez and uh, mass on the time trial. Uh, can he win it? I'm not sure. It depends on how Roglic goes. Roglic does always have a bad day or two in the G in the GC um, in a Grand Tour. Sorry, uh, but anyway, the the beginning part of the stage was pretty aggressive to be honest. Um, sort of like 320 normalized, pretty pretty tough um, opening part. Like I mean, it's not like impossible for these boys, but it, it wasn't easy on this climb. This is when Ineos really started to to bring it up. You can see it's sort of a staircase climb with a lot of ramps here and there. Uh, with, yeah, you know, 6% here, 4.9 watts per kilo. Then Ineos really drilled it here, 5.4 watts per kilo for 23 minutes. That's going to tire them out. Uh, and then on this little climb, it was a little bit easier, like 4 watts per kilo. But then um, there were parts where it's sort of more like 5 watts per kilo. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry about the camera. I'm, I'm going home again tomorrow, so we'll have all the good stuff. And um, if you are still watching, please subscribe. Very much appreciate it and whack us a like. Um, but the key thing to remember is also down here is the heat. It was very hot today. Okay, this is probably a bit exaggerated because it's Strava. Um, however, yeah, still, nonetheless, nonetheless, it's um, a very impressive effort we're going to see. So 4,000 kilojoules-ish before the final climb. What did he produce? 5.8 watts per kilo for half an hour. Uh, which is very strong. Um, he rode it quite smart as well. He didn't follow too many moves by like Roglic. Roglic like launched across a, a gap um, early on. Yates as well did a lot of attacking. He actually played it pretty smart, um, like you can see here. So the first bit of the climb was really drilled by first um, Jumbo Visma, and then uh, Ineos went on the front and whacked it as like 5.8 watts per kilo. Then there, there was a lot of attacking, but you can see here there's no big spike here. Like here, like okay, you got up to 700 watts and did like a 440 watt surge, but it wasn't like he got up to like a thousand watts. And then after that, they sort of messed around for a bit. And then Yates attacked and other people attacked. And then from then on, you can see the pace is pretty strong here, at like a 5.8 watts per kilo, which is very good. And then the last part was pretty surgy. Yates sort of was doing some attacking. He was, um, Haig was doing some attacking following um, well, himself, but also following uh, Lopez as well. Um, and this is a bit harder, 6.2 watts per kilo for the last five minutes. And then you can see like the last bit of the climb, um, he rode pretty hard, to be honest, did like 500 watts for the last minute, which is pretty, pretty good anaerobic capacity to be able to have at the end of a climb, showing that he's not absolutely spent by the end of it. Um, like, you know, he wasn't like, couldn't do any more. Like he had a little bit in return, which is always good. Uh, but yeah, so really promising from Jack Haig. I think he's going to get better and better all Grand Tour. And I'm expecting him to get on the podium for sure. So if I was you, I'd be betting some coin on Jack Haig to get the podium because I reckon it's definitely going to happen. Um, but yeah, super impressive from the boy. And um, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video about Jack Haig. I'm a big fan of the boy. Good to see his power data out and about. And we'll see you in the next one.